Hello, my name is Ryota Moria. I teach English classes in、uh, Otaru University of Commerce. And today I'm going to talk about how the students with color blindness are constructed in the classrooms. Hello, my name is Andrew Ryman. I teach communication at Aoyama Gakuen University. And today I'm going to talk about social psychological issues in the classroom. Hello, my name is Ryoko. I'm teaching some、uh, English courses and I'm, I'm going to talk about how ADHD、uh, students、uh, perform in the class. Thank you for coming to our poster presentation, Redefining Accessibility in Language Learning. In this session, the three presenters will share context, issues, coping strategies, and outcomes that they experience in the classrooms. We also would like you to think about what strategies would work for teachers, students, and institutions with us. Let me introduce presenters. The first presenter, Ryota Moria, will investigate the way in which a colorblind learner was constructed in the classroom. The second presenter, Andrew Ryman, will discuss about social psychological differences that he, he, he studied in his classrooms. The third presenter, Ryoko Sato, will describe two case studies regarding learners with ADHD. Finally, we will conclude our discussion by sharing our idea to create a new SIG in JOT. The goal of this presentation is to raise awareness of diverse learner needs in language learning, sharing coping strategies, and creating a network of support. Our method is to assess and analyze needs of teachers and students in diverse contexts to facilitate and support access to resources. Case one a social model of car blindness in language learning. This was one of my English reading and listening courses. I had one student with defective car vision in this class. I assessed learner needs by applying a social model of disability, which theoretically defines disa disability as inaccessibility to social and learning resources. I explored what in my class calls inaccessibility to learning for students with color blindness. First, I found some English textbooks which heavily rely on individual color perception. As a coping strategy, I started to write colors. Second, I found there might be an ableistic able notion of color, which means teachers tend not to be skeptical about their color terms. As a coping strategy, I tried to raise awareness of differences of color norms between cultures. The outcome is I received positive feedbacks from students. As my findings, class environments create colorblind learners. However, there is not much support for teachers available. In conclusion, my findings suggest that a social mode of disability in language learning may be beneficial for language teachers to improve accessibility in your classrooms.、Uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. Okay, I'm going to talk about social psychological differences in the classroom. When we have a group of students, they can have a, a number of hidden diversities and needs. So, when we look at a group like this, what do these students need?、Okay. The context I'm going to talk about is a regular communication seminar for 20 to 25 English majors at an intermediate university. I'm going to specifically talk about three cases. A student A with a poor attitude, lots of excuses, and no motivation. A student B who often slept in class, had frequent absences, was late, and unable to complete assignments. Then student C who was aloof, felt entitled, defensive, and focused on chatting rather than doing work. So at first glance, these look like behavioral problems, but perhaps they also represent special needs. For example, economic issues. Perhaps narcolepsy or narcissistic personality disorder. These issues were diagnosed after, but were first demonstrated as behavioral problems. So, when we look at students in terms of you know, behavior problems in the classroom, for example,、uh, this group of students 
perhaps lonely or distant or shy, uncommunicative, sloppy, despondent, moody or unmotivated, at first glance, we can see those as behavioral problems. However, with some assessment, we can see that these individual differences that may be invisible uh, can be considered learning difficulties, such as an age barrier for a mature student, a language barrier for an exchange student, um, narcolepsy as a problem for a student that actually slept in class, ADHD or dyslexia for a student that had sloppy work, and so on. So these are a range of students that we could have in any class. So the coping strategies that would work here, for example, on the teacher level, try to accommodate difficulties with flexible assignments, participation, and communication. That's what teachers can do. At the institutional level, it would be helpful if the institution could consider individual differences and make opportunities for networks or support or counseling. And finally, at the student level, if we can raise awareness of their needs, abilities, and skills, and the resources to become more productive, confident, active, and independent. Thank you. Hello, I'll talk about a case of a college class, including learners with ADHD and the suspected ADHD, who frequently fail to follow the class. The typical symptoms of ADHD are in inattention, impulsiveness, and hyperactivity. Also, you can see what difficulties are observed in the class. It seems hard for language teachers to support students with ADHD, but the coping strategies I have done were quite simple and easy to bring in your classroom. Now look at the coping strategy I used for them. Visualize lesson flow, allow to use a voice recorder, explicit sign of ongoing activity, and the use of a timer. Actually, those strategies made the class more access, uh, accessible for all students. Try to find their problems and to think about what you can do for them. It would be helpful to all students in your class. That's all for my part. Thank you. In conclusion to our presentation, as teachers, we can influence our students' perceptions, thereby changing their attitude. Using the experience to create a better environment for everyone becoming more sensitive, open, and empathetic towards differences, helping our students overcome barriers, integrate, participate, and become more independent. In any class, we have students with special needs. Three to 7% of any population will have physical, psychological, social, or other differences that could contribute to learning difficulties. As these are visible and invisible, it is important that we are aware of them and try to accommodate all students. An important question to consider is, how are we minorities and what do we know about others? By understanding this and asking these questions, we can increase awareness of diversity. I'd like to end with this quote by Kennedy. If we cannot end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. Thank you for your time. If you would like more information or like to contact us or like to join our new SIG, ALL, Accessibility in Language Learning, please join the Facebook group or find us using the QR code. Thank you for your time today and we look forward to meeting you again sometime in the future.